Hi, Dave Williams here, and in this video, we are going to be looking at Zener diodes, and specifically, we'll be looking at voltage regulation circuits like this one, and how the Zener diodes can adapt, or how well they, they are able to regulate when the source voltage is fluctuating. And there'll be a couple of extremes that we'll look at. One is the case where, what is the minimum amount of voltage that we can have that will still allow enough current to go through the Zener diode to, to keep it in that regulation mode, and on the other extreme is um, how much current, how much voltage can we have from the source that will still, that will not push too much current through the Zener diode to cause it to burn out or at least have a shorter life expectancy. Okay, here is an example circuit. I, it's similar to an example I've done before, but this time instead of having a variable load, we have a variable source. And what we're looking for is what is the range of voltages we can have from the source that will still keep this Zener diode regulating without putting too much current through it to cause it to burn out or have a shorter life expectancy than planned. So this particular Zener diode has a Zener voltage of 6.8 volts. It requires a minimum of one milliamp through it to put it into the regulation, to put it at the 6.8 volts for the Zener voltage. And it has a maximum power dissipation of one watt. So this maximum power means that there's also going to be this maximum current associated with it too, we'll call it IZM, which is going to be equal to the current when you're at that one watt. So this one watt divided by the 6.8 volts that the diode regulates to, which gives 147 milliamps. So the Zener diode requires at least one milliamp, but no more than 147 milliamps to be considered, a, to be regulating. So let's look at the minimum case. What voltage will we have from the source when the Zener current is equal to the knee current of one milliamp. Well, going back to the source, the source current comes through this resistor, comes to this branch, and then some of it goes through the Zener diode, some of it through the load. So in this case, the amount through the Zener diode is allowed to be below one milliamp. The amount to the load is, is supposedly going to be constant. As long as the Zener diode is regulating, it's going to be constant, and that current is going to be the 6.8 volts that the Zener diode is regulating to divided by 25 ohms of our load, which gives 272 milliamps for the current to the load. So if we have 272 milliamps to the load and we're at the minimum for the, for the Zener diode of one milliamp, that means coming from the source, we are going to have 273 milliamps. In order to have that 273 milliamps from the source, we'll look at the 6.8 volts across the Zener diode. So we'll have 6.8 volts at this point with respect to ground, plus the voltage drop that's across the 10 ohm resistor to come to our source voltage. So that source voltage, we can calculate it as 6.8 volts from the Zener diode, plus the 273 milliamps times the 10 ohm resistance gives 9.53 volts. So the minimum voltage from the source needs to be 9.53 volts. Anything less than that, and there won't be the one milliamp through the Zener diode to allow it to be regulating, and then this whole system falls apart. The Zener diode will be less than the 6.8 volts because it won't be in the in the regulating part of the, the IV characteristic curve, and we won't have the 6.8 volts across the source, so this, this whole circuit just falls apart. So let's look at the other extreme, and that's when we have the maximum amount of current that we can allow through the Zener diode of 147 milliamps. You could push through more than 147 milliamps, but that's beyond the rated power dissipation for the Zener diode, and it's probably not going to survive as long in this particular circuit. If you push it a lot beyond the 147 milliamps, it's gonna burn out pretty quickly. The current to the load is still going to be the same 272 milliamps because we're still we still want to regulate at that 6.8 volts. And that means the current from the source is going to be the 147 milliamps that goes to the Zener diode plus the 272 milliamps that's going to the load to give a total current from the source of 419 milliamps. 
So 419, 419 milliamps going through this source. So we can work backwards to figure out what voltage would be needed from the source to provide the 419 milliamps through that through this resistor. And the way that we do that, well, starting at ground, we have this, the plus 6.8 volts through the Zener diode, plus the voltage drop across that resistor. So we'll have 6.8 volts plus the 419 milliamps times the 10 ohms to give 10.99 volts. So when the voltage source is at 10.99 volts, that is pushing the Zener diode to its maximum allowable current. If I have any more than 10.99 volts, more current, the Zener diode is going to absorb more current and it just won't live quite as long. So for this particular circuit with this particular Zener diode, the source voltage can swing between 9.53 volts at the minimum and 10.99 volts at the maximum. If it drops below the minimum, then the Zener is going to fall out of its regulation mode. If it's more than this maximum, then too much current will be going through the Zener diode and it will have a reduced life expectancy.